I am here with my wonderful friend that I love to say uh, is Pastor Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a pretty cool cat. We, uh, it was his birthday the other day. And I have this thing about, so I have not been on social media. Like for over, I was not on social media for over Yeah, I've seen days. that. That's, that's crazy. So I love that. Yeah, so I'm going to do some stuff like kind of what I've done. I've been writing a book and a couple other things. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to explain what I did over that time and the time that I got back, just the whole series. But one thing I did do is I always got on to see whose birthday it was. <laughs> just enough to go see whose birthday so I can click on it and see. Because if I have anybody's number on my phone and it's their birthday, mm-hmm. and that's how I got back with Anthony. So, yeah, that's pretty amazing. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm taking it. I really am, dude. <laughs> I'm telling you, you need to. Yeah, it's killer. Like checking up on people, making sure they're good, and you know, just reconnecting. You know, I mean, when was the last time we talked? It was a while. You're probably at the AMI, like shortly after the AMI event, mm-hmm. which is where he got his nickname, Pastor Anthony. Yeah. When, when do you think they'll be able to put all that stuff back together? You know, those big meetups and all. No, first off. Let's start here. I'm very honored to be on this podcast. <laughs> this is my first podcast ever, so it's going to be exciting. And uh, thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, man. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, you're a you're a mover and shaker for, you know, here in Oklahoma City. And a lot of people know you and love you. And, you know, you got your own vision and passion about you. And that's, I mean, that's what we're here to talk about. And just kind of, man, where are you headed to and all that stuff. So we'll get yeah. into that. So. Your, your footsteps. No, my footsteps? Yeah. <laughs> man. <laughs> No, I just really love whenever I ask you, you know, like, hey, how's business? How's everything going? You know, I'm just loving up on people. I'm just, that's all I do is love up on people. I'm like, wow, you know, that's an answer you don't expect from a regular person or anyone else. And that's something I actually look up to, you know, day by day. What can I do today to love up on someone? You know, how can I spread that love? And, um, that's what I strive for every day. You know, yeah, I got goals. I got things to do in the future. But it's like, all that don't matter unless I'm doing something today to make that happen, you know? Or just focus on today. A simple smile. You know, uh, I actually heard this story. Um, it was about suicide prevention. Pretty interesting. This guy was going to jump off the Golden Gate Bridge. But he wrote on his letter, if anyone, or just one person, smiles at me, I won't do it. That man lost his life that day. No one smiled at him. So imagine if our smile is so impactful, it's so powerful that we could save someone's life just by something like that. Imagine how it can up someone's mood. Imagine how we can spread love just in a simple smile, you know, with a stranger, you know, I don't even know them and I see them, hey, how you doing? Mm -hmm. You know, it just reminds them of that there is good in the world, especially right now, you know, people need to see that smile. But just trying to spread love every day like you do. (laughs) Man, I'm honored about that, dude. I appreciate that. It's it's a lot of fun to not have a normal answer, you know? Mm -hmm. I was talking with a friend of mine, and we were talking about dead questions. So whenever you go to networking events or you go to, I don't know, whatever, go to a party and it's really awkward and yeah, like, hey, what do you do? <laughs> it's such a boring, stupid question. Yeah, Don't ask that question. That's stupid. <laughs> don't ask that question, people. I love to ask the question, what's the worst smell you've ever smelled in your life? The worst what? Smell. Smell. <laughs> that would really throw someone off. I know. <laughs> but then I get to tell people that one is the reason why I hate cats. And mm-hmm. two is because I, I found my passion and my purpose in life mm. because of a bad smell. To explain to me more. So quick story about it is I took a seven hour F in college mm-hmm. because I got back a day too late from a mission trip that I went on. Uh, and the reason why I went on that mission trip was because I did all, all my clinicals for basic EMT at OSU OKC. And I, uh, I did clinicals on the truck. I did clinicals at a fire station. I did clinicals at an ER out in Midwest City. And then I was like, all right, God, 
I'm going to do the deal with you, like putting out a fleece. If I am meant to be in the medical field, send me something to see if I can handle it or not. There was a smell. It was the smell of a paint huffer. A what? A person that huffs paint to get high. Oh. So whenever you do it for so long, your body excretes that, like those chemicals. Oh. And it was a huge room. Like yeah. this lady came in covered in, I didn't know the lady at first, but uh-huh. covered in paint. In oh. gold paint. And just, I walked in this big old massive room. Oh, it's just, bleh, uh, right in the wastebasket just as I walked in. It's like, guys, I'm out. I'm done. Like, I'm, I'll, I'm over here. I'm finishing this clinical. I got invited to go to, uh, go to, again, yeah, not Kenya. That was last year. To Brazil on a mission trip to go build a church. I finished raising the money. Sent my uh, passport off to get my visa. Boom, I was out in two weeks. By the time I got back, <laughs> I couldn't drop the class. Ah. Uh. Yeah. So I couldn't take it incomplete. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, you can retake it again next year, and then you know it won't count against you. It's like, nope, I'm good. <laughs> so I took a seven hour out. And bye. <laughs> He's out. But going on that trip to Brazil, I found my passion. Mm, what was it? My passion and my heart and my purpose is to do international mission work. Wow. Yeah. And I got to go to Kenya. Yeah, I've seen that. Uh, last year, twice. I was, I was in Kenya for almost a month. Mm-hmm. met people from all over the continent of Africa I went to Brazil I went to the Micronesian Islands which is over by Australia um, that was really fun because whenever you see 6 and 7 year olds with machetes cutting down trees pretty awesome mm. and the freshest coconut I've ever had in my life that sounds really good it's freaking awesome <laughs> I, like it ruined coconut for well, me so where are you being led to next what do you feel you're going to be put in so right now because uh, it's you know country borders are still like i don't even think we can go to canada right now oh, i mean i don't know crazy. but uh i'm waiting to go to haiti so i'm going to go to haiti with uh, the owners of higher ground yeah whenever uh, they got a church and a uh, school that they support down there so i'm going to go there and i'm i know next year for sure i'm going back to kenya after my buddy gets ordained or so, his ordination I'm, I'm not familiar with mission trips mm-hmm. i've never been on a mission um of course i didn't grow up uh knowing that neither So like when you're out there, what are you doing? Gotcha. So whenever I went on my first one, I was, I was younger, just barely younger than you. I was 21 on my first one. And then I went on like seven in two years. Work and witness programs are through the Nazarene church and they do witnessing. They do Bible school. They do Mm -hmm. other things. And then they also have a building project. So we built the church. So we had church in the Sunday. We got there in the old building, and we had church in the new building that we built that mm, next Sunday. Them. Wow, that's so amazing! Within one week, and it was blocked. And they had you know different churches from all over the country, all over the world, go to different places. So it's a whole network. So they had the framing done, and they had the foundation done. So we came in and laid the blocks, did the concrete on the floor. Mm. Did the windows, did the roof. So we were able to have church in the new church that next Sunday. Wow. Um, Micronesian Islands, we cleared out uh, about half an acre of trees and stuff and then put in the foundation. So the next group could come and do the the walls and everything. Or the, I don't know if they did the walls or not. Uh, but we did the foundation, so the next group was doing whatever the next one was. Yeah. But Mexico, uh, Mexico, we all took extra. So our all of our carry-ons were sewing machines. Mm. So we had our personal carry-on, and then we all had a sewing machine. And we <laughs> took them down to Villa de Mosa, and then we drove into Candelaria, which is in the Yucatan Peninsula. Oh, yeah. yeah. And um, we, built in, we built a covering in between the parsonage and the church to enclose that area. They had local electricians and stuff, and then they put on a roof, and then we finished out the inside, and then we brought the sewing machines so that the people of the church, and they could also, people in the village could rent out the space yeah, to be able to make money to make things and sell. Wow. So those are just a couple of them. I got a question for you. I got answers. <laughs> it's like I'm doing this podcast. I know. Me. It's like he's interviewing <laughs> me, man. What's going on? <laughs> That's all right. So being on these mission trips... Um, can you tell me one story that really just hit your heart 
to tears and why? Pet me to tears. Something um, you can never forget. So, I can't tell you that. So, I, until about two years ago, I was not an emotional person. Mm-hmm. Like, I watch a, a movie now. Like, I'll watch Frozen. I'll admit this. I'll watch Frozen 2 with my daughter and my kids, and I will cry. <laughs> like, I'm, I will tear up whenever mm-hmm. Elsa's singing. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, I used to not be that way. So, I, I'm that way now. So, back then, it's not the fact that I... It's not the fact that I was teary-eyed or just anything like that, but the things yeah. I saw over and over and over again mm-hmm. is I saw contentment. I saw happy. Kids don't have Xboxes. Kids don't have TVs. Yeah. People are just... I mean, you'd be surprised what people live in. But I have a story about a friend of mine that is in Kenya. His name is Titus Kamau. Mm-hmm. His wife gave me the name Munani. So that's my Kenyan name. Wow. Okay. That's right. <laughs> I mean, big stuff. And that's crazy how um, these children, you see them so happy, smile, and playing, and they don't have all the electronics. You know, they're not, it, you know, struggling with all that. Do you, do you see um, a lot of children there depressed like you do here in America? No. And that's crazy. Like, in today in America, like, there's so many children that suffer from depression and anxiety. Why so? I don't know. That's answers I'm trying to get. Well, let's think about it. <laughs> let's think through that real quick. Okay. So, going to other countries and going to Brazil and the Micronesian Islands in Mexico, I got to see what real poverty is. Mm-hmm. Whenever people ask me now, hey, how are you? I said, I live in America. I'm great. Mm -hmm. Everybody's complaining about this, that, and the other. It's like, you guys have no idea what real poverty is. You cannot fail in America. Yeah. If you are a child, you are susceptible. If you have mental illness, those are the only two. Mm -hmm. If you are an adult in America, you cannot fail. There's not a system to allow you to fail. Yeah. There's food stamps, there's housing, you know, you can struggle in the middle class, lower middle class, and you know, it's a struggle because they're not taught financial literacy, Mm -hmm. all those things. So there's a lot of down, I mean, financial literacy is a problem in the world. Mm -hmm. It's not taught. Yeah. But whenever we're talking about depression and, you know, anxiety and all those things, I think there's a lot of envy. Mm Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of, I want what the Joneses have. You're, you're not wrong. <laughs> and the problem with that is the fact that, I man, I know people that have stupid nice houses, mm-hmm. super nice houses, and I'm thankful and I'm happy for them. I know that instead of having a big payment for a house, I could go spend a year serving with my family in Kenya. Yeah. For what three payments of that house would cost. Yeah. And you'll be able to make great memories that will last them forever. Right. You know? What's the impact, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I know a guy that he puts on, he's actually in Tulsa, his name's Pastor Rubens. Um, he can put on in a an evangelism crusade, for the lack of a better word, in Central or South America for about fifty thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. Thirty, forty thousand people come to it. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's big. Hundreds, thousands of people come to the Lord. Mm-hmm. And, the, and that's really the most important thing. Or you can buy a car that costs fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. Yeah. And then when you're standing in front of him, hey, who'd you bring? Well, I left the car over there. <laughs> <laughs> the car didn't come with me. Yeah. And again, man, it has nothing, you know, we live in America, the westernized countries, first world problems we all have our own problems Mm -hmm. it is what it is our problems are big to us yeah i've just been very blessed i get to go see and i've seen i know what real poverty is yeah and i see how happy people can be Mm. it's crazy the story i was going to tell you about being emotional right Mm -hmm. so i did have one of those last year Mm. i went back to kenya whoops i went back to kenya 
and I got to go uh, be in this conference and I got to interview people from all over Africa and I took three pastors with me mm -hmm. from that I met there back in it, yeah. June. I think I went, I think I went there in June. I went back in October. So I interviewed each of them because these guys have just become my family. They've opened their homes. Like they are my brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Their wives are fantastic. And Titus has an amazing story. He speaks four languages and he, ne he was never formally taught wow. English. Four? Yeah. What are these four? So there's Swahili, uh -huh. there's ghetto Swahili, which is a totally different dialect. And yeah. then there's um, English and then uh, Maasai. So Maasai is the native, it's like you learning Cherokee or Choctaw. Mm. So it's the native language to Kenya. Yeah. So he speaks those four languages. And he was abandoned. Him and his si siblings were abandoned by their mom because she was a traveling evangelist, which is pretty normal in Africa. And he got picked up by a man and he basically became a house slave. Mm. And this, he's 31, 32. So he's, he's a bit younger than me. But so this wasn't even all that long ago. But he told me this story about his mom had abandoned him. This man took him in. He lived in a shack, like literally made out of steel tin yeah. in the corner in the back part of the yard. Mm. They threw a pillow in there. They gave him like, you know, like that's what he lived in. Yeah. Wasn't allowed to go in the house unless he was working. He was supposed to only stay outside, take care of the farm part of the house and all that stuff. The woman tried to kill him three times. The final time she threw a Molotov cocktail and burned down his thing. The, the luckily, shack? The shack. That's good. Oh, so yeah. luckily he had made this place, his this part in it so he could slide it backwards mm -hmm. so he could get out like if he needed to yeah. or whenever he needed to sneak out. So he did that. The woman thought that she had killed him finally because she tried to poison him two other times. That's, that's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, I got invited to go speak at his ordination. Mm -hmm. So he got to become a pastor. So you become an apostle and then you become a pastor and then you become a bishop or whatever. Yeah. So the most emotional thing that ever happened to me in my all my world travels is I got to pray over him and his wife. Wow. at his ordination mm -hmm. I was so honored that I got to do that Yeah, because it wasn't even a place that I probably should have been mm -hmm. but I got to hear his story and I got to tell and I told his congregation I can't tell you the story about Titus because I don't have that permission mm -hmm. but you guys have no idea how lucky and blessed you guys are to have this man here and Jane for you to have this man because the story of how they met is fantastic too well, um, God ordained. It is. <laughs> Hands down. Wow. So, but we're done talking about me. <laughs> so that was a great question. So thank you for asking such a fantastic question. That's right. Yeah, we did good. <laughs> so, man, tell me, like, what's going on in your life? Tell me, you know, your walk. Tell me what's going on. What, what's your plans? Where are you going? Oh, my walk. Tell um. Me. It's crazy because, like, on the way here, I was actually on the phone with Alex, Alex Moses. Mm -hmm. Shout out to him. Great That's like you're supposed to call me back. I called him. Tell him I'm upset. <laughs> oh, call him out. <laughs> I know I know he's in Vegas, like, having a good time or something. Uh, but um, the conversation asked him to pray for me more um, because we had a Bible study probably a month or so ago at Higher Grounds. And one of his friends, Josh, he led it. And towards the end, he said something that really hit me in the heart. Um, he said to be in a constant state of prayer. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, is that like five times a day, 10 times a day? No, he said, just be in a constant state of prayer. You're just constantly having a conversation with him, constantly just building our relationship knowing that he's there always watching he can listen to any word you have mm -hmm. and just praying conversating with him and i told him 
I'm trying to practice that more, you know, throughout the day. Even if I'm having a conversation with someone, of course, I'm listening. And but it's like, how can because Christ is in all. How can I, you know, how can the Lord use me to speak to this person and give them life? Mm-hmm. You know, regardless if it might be a small comment, you know, it's simple. Jesus says, keep it simple, you know, and it's just, I want to have laser focus on Jesus. <laughs> I want to have laser focus on Jesus. And I told them to pray on me that I may have that. And I want to have so much attention towards him that he'll work through me in every scenario now of course i'm not perfect we're human i'm gonna slip up i'm sorry you know i slipped up a couple days ago but it's the thing is the difference between a saved heart and an unsaved heart is repentance Mm -hmm. am i gonna just continue on let it take over my life or am i gonna go to the father down on my knees repenting for him to take it away from me to forgive me I don't even have to say forgive me because I know I'm already forgiven. Mm -hmm. But just letting him know that I know my wrong and I know where I need to go from here. And I'm asking for his assistance to improve. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's been really well. I started going to this church called Destiny Church. It's crazy how I got there too. Okay. So Come on, bring it. Let me hear it. I love a story. So you remember my testimony i told you whenever we went to that big event at uh crossings Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and i ended up at this church called fair grad dios and after that though i was was keep i kept getting the message to leave you know and that's kind of odd because usually you don't get a message to leave a church that he had something better for me and i don't necessarily knew what that was I didn't want to, I fought it, you know? I had a lot of friends, I had community there. Um, A lot of people loved me there. I loved a lot of people there too as well. Mm. And I'm not gonna lie, it broke me to tears. Like I legit broke to tears because I did not want to leave. It was the flesh battling the spirit to the max. I was like, I don't understand. Like, it's a good church. And so I left and I thought it was gonna be Victory Church. So I started going to Victory Church and nothing against the church at all it's great i love how they have everything set up but i walk in and i walk out and no one even notices and and that's what i would do just walk in walk out no one really um of course the what do you call them ushers they acknowledged me but when i was in preaching was done i'm out and i'm like okay i think this is my church um but then i met alex moses which is crazy how I met him too. <laughs> right. Uh, we had, we actually always knew each other from Facebook, and of course um, he's posting stuff. And I'm like, oh, like good job, like like bro, that's crazy. I like that. Mm-hmm. And we finally get to meet because of Jack inviting everyone to Fit Camp 180. Mm-hmm. Like he's invited everyone, everyone that he could say hi to. <laughs> right. And. Little that I know that would that would be the biggest blessing of my life. Um, one of the biggest blessings. And so the first day I went, Jack's like finally pushed me to go because I kept saying, like, yeah, I'll go tomorrow. <laughs> He's like, no, if sorry, I... you gotta go. <laughs> Wait, what you time go. did you say? Five? It's oh. just five AM, man. It's fine. That's yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not easy. What else are you doing? Sleeping? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I went and that's when I finally got to meet Alex for the first time. Right. And it's, <laughs> it's like, man, it was great finally to actually meet you. And <laughs> the first conversation was about, um, that he's, he's talking to this one girl and she's a woman and she loves Jesus. So I'm like, yes, that's what you need. And so later on we did the workout after the workout, I was like, Hey man, tell me more you know and so we had uh one of those moments where you guys say the same word at the same time <laughs> did you jinx him jinx i should have you should have i didn't 
I could have got a free Coke out of that. I know. <laughs> Man. Uh, but it led up to the conversation of being unequally yoked. And we both said it at the same time. And we're like, whoa, bro. Like, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's crazy. And uh, Brighton came up to us. And he's like, bro, did I just witness a best friend moment? <laughs> I, <laughs> and I just met Alex. So I was like, maybe, I don't know, in my head. Sometimes you get some connection, man. It's just, it is what it is. Yeah, it's crazy. Sure. The, the chemistry between us just hit off right off the bat. And our personalities just link so well. It's crazy. Definitely. So after that, we started hanging out more, um, spending a lot more time, you know, talking about our walks too as well in Christ. Mm -hmm. And he was like, hey, bro, you should come to church with me. I'm like, yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm down. And I went. And the first day I went and worship, just boom, fire, like feeling the Lord's fire. I'm like, whoa, hold up. <laughs> and so then I went again the next week. Boom, fire. And I'm like, Lord, is this where you want me to be? Third third week in, not fire again. And I'm like, <laughs> Lord, this is How it. How many times did you have to ask? Only three? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They say third time's a charm, third time's right? Third a charm. That's it, baby. <laughs> and so um, it's it's really good. Um, I actually started this class called Discovering Destiny. They basically have like a little small community group to show how the church is set up, how everything is going and teaching about the word. And then from there, um, when the class is over, they'll split off to the community groups that wh whoever wants to go to. And... Well, Pastor Chris, he's the youth leader there, and he's actually wanting me to become a youth leader with them. Mm -hmm. And that's crazy because at the church that I was at before, I always wanted to be a leader. I remember the first couple of weeks that I was there, I would ask her, I was like, hey, you know, I've been doing a lot of like reading and I've been diving deep into doctrine and theology. I feel like I hold a lot. I just want to be able to give more. And I, I want a role of leadership. I want to be able to do more, you know, necessarily it can be services. It can do whatever. Uh, funny thing is I just took a test. Um, and this test shows like, what are your gifts? You know, yeah, like evangelism. Spiritual gifts. Yeah. Okay. Spiritual gifts. Yeah. And I noticed that I'm not a server <laughs> at all. That's all right. And it was like 32%. And I'm like, dang. Well, maybe it's because I'm a delegator. <laughs> I just give it off to someone else. Nah, I mean, you know, we don't um, have so much time. And then the highest percentage was like 83% was evangelism. And then I think uh, an another 80% was teaching. And then another one, the third one was like 76 and it was administration. What exactly is administration? Delegating. I don't even know. <laughs> oh, that makes delegating. sense. Delegating. That's what it is. Administration is delegating. Wow. There that's you go. crazy. We got them figured out. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, and yeah, so now like my walk there, it's been really good. I met great people there, um, building community. And now outside of the church, because of course, church is, you know, seven days a week. All right. Well, well let me ask you. So are you going to go and work with the youth? Yeah, yeah, so you are, I am. Yeah. I am going to get on board right on. and learn more, see how I can help the youth. Because that, that's something I always wanted to do, right. you know? I'll tell you the best advice I can give you. Because okay. I, I used to be a switch leader. And they gave me, like, not the bad kids, but, like, the kids are, like, troublemakers and this and yeah. the other, right? So I have a gift because I'm very patient. Like, I don't get upset. I don't get mm. mad. I'm like, I noticed that. You're doing <laughs> something. Like, what's going on, you know? Yeah. So... It was me and another co-leader, so I hope that that's like kind of how you guys can do it. I don't mm -hmm. know how, how the youth is set up, but one week I would let the other guy teach, and then I would take one guy one-on-one, -on -one. Mm -hmm. and I'd listen. That's good. Because children, kids, they're constantly being talked at, mm -hmm. not talked to, mm -hmm. or listened to. And that's what they want. That's all they wanted. Yeah. That's all they wanted. And the... And I got one, uh, see your Dougie's, uh, Dougie's 21, Matt, yeah, no, yeah, Dougie's 21, and, uh, so is Seth, 
and they're two kids I had from junior high. Mm-hmm. And like Dougie is like a nephew to me and my wife. Mm-hmm. And he's in Washington. He's married now. Uh, his husband's in a uh, in the Navy. So they're up there, but he calls me like we're the his surrogate parents. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and we just love him. You know? Yeah. And uh, and Seth actually ran into him the other day because I had to have Okie Dig come out to my house because I had to change up my water line. Yeah. Oh, fine. <sighs> <laughs> but he was the guy that came out to like check where everything was. So like that, yeah. was, that was pretty cool. You know, but he worked with us for a while after he was out of high school. Mm-hmm. But that's just the best advice I can give you. Just try to get one on one time. That's golden. And just listen. Because just know that they're being talked at all the time mm-hmm. by parents, by teachers, by everybody. Wow. Just be ears to ear. Yeah, I like that. I'm definitely going to implement that. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> all right. So, seven days a week. You can only be at church so long. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people forget that church is not a building, Amen. church is community, it it's is. people within us. And so. You know, of course, I try to implement that within, you know, the community of real estate, you know, and real estate investors, you know, since I'm spending a lot of time with these people, how can I can spread Christ within this instant? Like when I lie, real estate is such a blessing and I love it. It's fun. It's great. (laughs) It's easy. (laughs) I think it's easy. Yeah. But. And. But like, I'd rather have a conversation about Jesus rather than real estate. I don't know. It's crazy. No, it's not. <laughs> what, what's your number one? Jesus. What's your number one spiritual gift? Oh, evangelism. Bravo! Oh, fire. <laughs> I love light bulbs. <laughs> uh, but. And. So in, in my journey in real estate, of course, it was for financial freedom and being free of the burden of you know debt Mm -hmm. and i was in debt for a little bit and i still am a little bit and i'm working on it of course now it's a good debt or bad debt it's good debt because it's the rehab from my rental property okay and the rent yeah difference yeah i love dave ramsey but there's a difference yeah there is (laughs) um and so I was so caught up in chasing a number. Like, I need that number. I gotta get that number. And, or I gotta get that house. I need to get that house. You know, if I get that house, then I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be better. Like, I'm gonna feel better. And things are gonna be in the line. My focus was so much on that mm. that I lost my, my Lord and Savior my eyes weren't drawn to him so when i first got my my rental property um by the way he's 22 got a rental property don't (laughs) think you're too young people (laughs) thank you but i got it and i was like wow i worked so hard to do this and it's actually happened it's happening because of the people around me and i didn't get that at the moment it's happening because my parents guided me. It's happening because of the connections that I made. It's happening because of my Lord and Savior put me in that place. But I didn't realize that. So when I got my rental property, I looked at it. I'm like, I was overwhelmed. It looked like a big mountain to me. Because it needed a lot of work. And my dad told me, because I thought he would help me out with the rehab and he's like well are you gonna go work on your rental property tomorrow we signed the contract literally the day before that's what he told me are you gonna work on your your rental property tomorrow i'm like yeah yeah i thought he was gonna go help me and i went there and i looked at it and i just i was scared i was fearful because my eyes weren't focused on jesus so fear took over my life for that second Mm. and i felt this weight and burden on my chest and i was just breaking down in tears i didn't know what to do i've never been alone like that to try to rehab a property on my own and i realized how much i needed jesus in my life but also the people around me as well like being more appreciative of who they are what they're doing in my life 
loving up on them. That's right. And and so, dang, where 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 was I going with this? You need some <laughs> Jesus in your life because you got sidetracked because yeah. of business. Business and I'm trying to chase a dollar amount too as well. Like, oh, I gotta get a million. I gotta get a million. Yeah, I gotta shoot for the million. I'm, I've been told that I'm gonna be a millionaire, so I gotta be so focused on getting a million. But I forget that the Lord and Savior is the one that's gonna get me there sometimes. And I'm not gonna lie, I lose focus. That's why I've been praying to have laser focus upon Jesus and letting him take control of my life. Everyone talks about the dash, right? Mm -hmm. You know, from the day you are born and then the day you die and then there's dash in the middle. Mm -hmm. They're like, what are you gonna do with that dash? My thing is, am I gonna give that dash to Jesus? Or am I just gonna live it without giving it to him? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm following. Okay. Dude. I am so impressed with the fact that how old you are and the fact that you have this realization. Mm, thank you. I was 35 whenever I came to that realization. Mm. What really pushed me though, and it's because I made the biggest mistake of my life, but it was the best mistake of my life. It changed my life forever. Bring it. Come on. Some people need some blessing. <laughs> come on. So I was so caught up in, I cared about how I appeared, how I looked. So I had to drive the nicest thing ever. I was a freshman in high school with a 2013 Subaru Subaru WRX. It's like a turbocharged. That's fine. That's what my brother drives now. For real? I got to drive it. It's fun. Yeah, they're it's fun. It's a lot of fun to drive. But like, imagine, like, <laughs> well, of course, I worked hard for that. Ever yeah. since I was like 10, I was cutting yards every you know day that I could, and I was saving up to get the car of my dreams, and that's right. what it was. And of course, my parents helped me significantly, especially my dad, to get it. But it influenced this materialism upon me. So okay. after the car, uh, I got a Toyota Tundra 2014, big tires. Like, that <laughs> truck was bigger than me. It We're was... in Oklahoma, by the way, people. <laughs> like, that's the Ferrari. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. And so... And that was like 34000 And it came to the point where my mom was the co-center on that truck. And she was like, hey, uh, I got to get my name off of it because they were going to refinance uh, one of their properties. And so I was like, well, what if I just go get a new one? You know, it, it works out the same. And so at the time, I went to, I think it was Fowler Toyota. I went there and... And of course, no one wanted to take me serious. They're like, who is this little 18 year old looking for a truck? <laughs> and I was looking at all of them and just one really stuck out. It was so beautiful. To this day, it's still the truck of my dreams, but I know not yet. <laughs> okay, fair. And it was a platinum edition, 2018. Yeah, 2018 platinum edition Toyota Tundra. Okay. And it was this like copper brown. It was so amazing. The sun was shine on it. Just and listening. Just, yeah. It was <laughs> it was glamorous, you know, to to the eye. And I'm like, I want that one. And it was the most expensive vehicle on the lot. <laughs> <laughs> Good eye. Good eye, man. Good eye. <laughs> so imagine, you know, eighteen year old going to this lot wanting the most expensive truck on the lot. Yeah, no one wanted to take me serious at all. But, um, of course, I went a second time, dressed a little bit more professional, and finally someone had gave me the time. He ran my credit, and he's like, wow, you your credit's amazing for the age that you are. <laughs> and so he was like, this truck can't be pro possible. And so I'm like, all right, cool. You know, I'm getting closer to having the truck in my dreams. I'm going to be flied out. You know, I'm going to be driving around everyone's gonna look at me i'm gonna be cool i'm gonna get a whole bunch of girls you know at that time you know that's what the mindset consisted I mean, of i mean that's i mean men are in their 40s and 50s and that's still what they think <laughs> okay so like you're doing really good like yeah. to realize where you are now yeah. so keep keep coming come on and um 
so it, it took a fight of course and 20 days later i get a call and they're like hey we can't find anyone to fund you and of course who wants to lend i, I negotiated by the way i negotiated them down to 48 msrp was 55 i was taking like some tips on how to negotiate and all that nice. so it was like a small cut it helped out even though it's still expensive and i'm not really winning at the end of the day how much did you buy your first house for um i bought it for 68 okay almost as much my first house was thirteen thousand. Oh wow! That I bought. <laughs> yeah, Gosh, money. I need to take tips. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Northeast Oklahoma City. Yeah, it's a nice part of town. I heard it's I'm, very fancy. I'm, I mean, it, no, no, it's not fancy. <laughs> it's, just, it's good for cash flow. Yeah, yeah. Great for cash flow. Mm-hmm. All right, so, so oh. keep, keep going. Oh yeah, yeah. Um. Oh yeah. No one wanted to lend me, and so I was getting a little frustrated. And I got dressed up again, professional, ready for business. And we went there and I'm like, hey, I need to speak to the financial manager. You know, and I'm just like an 18 year old. <laughs> <laughs> but I have amazing credit. And I got cash money. And I was a little bit. And so I went in with my laptop and my mom went with me. My mom went with me, but she didn't say a word. She was like more there like for support kind of thing she let me handle the whole situation and so i took my laptop too as well and while i was negotiating with the financial manager letting her know like hey you know you guys need to make this work like i want this truck and if you guys can't give it to me i have jim norton literally on the live chat on this website you that's why you hear the dings and they said they're willing to help me out and so it kind of threw her off a little bit True. because I have a laptop. Oh, fuck up. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> it went very well. Towards the end, she gave me credit for, you know, being, you know, being able to work her, you know, in negotiating mm-hmm. at 18 years old. And she, she was like, she told my mom, like, your, your son's going places. And from there, like, I had this taste of success supposedly because i i negotiated you know no one wanted to lend to me but i made it happen right and so i just when i looked at the truck i looked at the sky and i was like oh lord thank you it was the only time i focused onto the lord was after i did all of that nowhere in that journey did i have the lord in mind till the end but so the payment on this truck was six hundred and sixty six dollars and a couple of cents plus insurance which was probably around 200 or better no or yeah plus <laughs> it was a uh, it's a 5.7 engine v8 engine Expensive it loves amazing. gas yep 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 10 to 13 miles per gallon. (laughs) Uh, I was spending probably around almost $400 in gas every month. So probably around a grand. Yeah. I mean, you're like at $1,200. Yeah. If I wasn't daily driving it, then yeah, a grand um, on this truck. And I'm only making, I was making at the time $13 an hour times 40 times oh you did math i was making around that's 520 a week you're making around two grand a month yeah so and on top of that i had a lot of bills to pay i was living off of like two hundred dollars a month two hundred dollars a nice truck (laughs) yeah (laughs) you just sleep in your truck yeah and that's like money i had to take um out like you know friends and even girls too as well yeah and it's like you you want to go to mcdonald's you want to go to the park and go for a walk you know (laughs) and we were going my super nice truck but i didn't have enough money to take her out to super nice places right and so it kind of discouraged me for a second i felt chained i felt bond um and one night i just I had this dream and I woke up in tears and I was like, 
I was frustrated. I was mad. And I went out to my mom and I was like, hey, I don't want this truck no more. I need to get it sold. Like, I don't want it. I have like nothing. I have no money. I have nothing to show for. Like, I want it to be someone. And eventually she broke the news. They're not going to give you what you want. You're going to lose like this much money if you try to turn it in. And I'm like, oh, man, I'm not going to be able to get rid of this thing. I'm not. And I read this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. <laughs> uh, that's a good story. That's a good and, story. and he said, instead of trying to deduct your debt or your expenses, learn how to make more money. Mm-hmm. And so I started getting into stocks. And I started reading the graphs, try to learn more. I was looking up these YouTube videos. I'm like, okay, this business looks good. Um, they're going on a big route. They just per news that they're expanding so I'm like this would be a great one to invest in and I downloaded Robinhood and only had fifty dollars to invest. So I'm like fifty dollars, oh. fifty dollars baby. <laughs> I'm gonna be rich, you know, with fifty dollars, watch. And it? I'm did sorry. You, did you lose the fifty? No. Oh. No. <laughs> Good. Good thing I didn't. So I put fifty dollars in and the next day, I watched the YouTube video, the guy that was helping me out. I forgot what his name was. It was, I believe it was like Ricky uh, Gutierrez or something like not that. Ricky Bobby? No, not Ricky Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny movie, actually. I, I want to rewatch that. Waterboy? Water no, Boy. no, no, no. That's Adam Sandler. That's Will Ferrell. Yeah, it's... Um, Talladega Nights. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell Ricky me. Bobby. If you're not first, you're last. last. That's right. <laughs> he was drunk when he said that. <laughs> Um, By the way, it's really amazing. Like with that being said, that happens all the time. Like you may say something that's extremely profound to somebody that you say in passing, mm-hmm. and they'll remember for the rest of their life. Yeah, that's the best lesson from that movie. <laughs> it really is. Oh yeah. Um. Oh yeah. Put fifty dollars in, and oh, in this video, Ricky had a guest. He was a wholesaler uh, for real estate. And he's showing that he's getting ten thousand dollar checks just by flipping a contract, and I'm like, wow, that seems so easy, so com- like I don't have to worry about you know pinching, you know buying, selling, buying, selling. Oh, I lost money. Oh, dang. Oh well, gotta continue buying and selling. Oh, look, a good amount of money. Let's keep investing when I can just get a house. Find someone who's motivated to sell and help them out. I know buyers and get them connected and I'm able to charge a fee on top of that. Oops, sorry. So I'm like, oh, this makes sense. I'm going to do this. And, and so I started getting into. So basically that truck was the biggest mistake, but best mistake of my life because it started my real estate journey. It actually started the um my my walk with christ you know within that and i would love to talk about that but it's long it's really long well i'll say well we'll have you on another time and yeah let's we'll talk about yeah you should put that in your phone as a note okay so, hey siri uh, she don't hear me she don't hear she's cut off <laughs> <laughs> anyways but yeah best mistake of my life was buying a super expensive truck at a young age best mistake and it's really um boosted up of you know my maturity and knowing that things in life are pretty expensive <laughs> even like toilet paper you know you know big Especially role during pandemics i know <laughs> that's crazy man, I, I can't got, believe I that some tp man yeah Whenever that happened, that was so hilarious. But it was frustrating at the same time because my my parents weren't really ones to like go and bulk up on a whole bunch of toilet paper, you know. And prepare for a couple of months, like yeah. To do. My mom would tell me go to the store, get toilet paper. All right, cool. And I didn't think nothing of it. I thought it was just you know fake. It's just a whole bunch of pictures. You know, it's all in another state. It's not gonna be here. Nothing. Nothing. I went to nothing <laughs> at all. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was get, and then so I was like, okay, maybe jo- Dollar General will have some, you know. People don't think about going to Dollar General. It's a smaller store. They're going to want to go to Walmart since they're trying to get a bigger amount. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing what. <laughs> Man, I don't I don't even know why like I don't even know why it was toilet paper. <laughs> Man, it's just I yeah. don't get it. I was in Florida. I was supposed to speak on a real estate cruise. Yeah. Whenever all that happened. Like, and they started shutting the country down. Mm -hmm. So we just hung out in Orlando for a week. But we went to the grocery store. Like, "Mm, it's kind of (laughs) weird. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, it was was the weirdest thing in the world. Seeing, I mean, well, actually, in Oklahoma, because whenever we have tornadoes and stuff like that, like, places get pretty bare Mm -hmm. after that happens. So seeing that back home wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah. But what it was was weird. Yeah, it definitely is. So what were you doing whenever all this was hitting, like, in March? I was in Florida. I was supposed to be on a cruise down to yeah. the Caribbean speaking about wholesaling. So when did you come back? Whenever I was supposed to come back because my friends owned Airbnb, so we just chilled there. <laughs> just had, like, a little vacation yeah. out there. It was me and my wife, man. We just went down there and we just hung out. Did they start to um, close things down over there? Yeah, so, what? Ha- so, so we got down there in Orlando a day early. My boy Vinny and mm-hmm. Lexi. Uh, Lexi is the one that uh, put on the real estate cruise. So she asked me to come down and talk because of what I do and how I do it. Yeah. And uh, so went stay with Vinny and met his uh, met his boyfriend and met his um, dad for the first time. He's, Vinny's actually from New York, so his dad moved down to Florida. And they're remodeling the house. And uh, he was a, uh, he, yeah, he used to be a, like, crime scene investigator. Wow. That's and cool. then he taught it in school, so he had all of, like, we got to see, like, crime scene stuff. Stuff. What, what, what's that show with um, Ice-T in it? I have no idea. I don't know, like, I feel like one of the Law and Orders or whatever. Law and Order, Criminal Minds. Is it SBU Criminal Minds? Or something like that. I don't know, no. something like that. Anyways. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so we went down there, um, got on the boat. Mm-hmm. We had lunch on the boat. We went through the safety drill. And just as we were getting ready to shove off, mm. Donald Trump went on national TV and said, if you are, like, we're shutting down, we're locking down the country. Yeah. If you're going to be gone past Monday, I think is what the date was, because I think we we're supposed to leave out, because one of the cruise lines went ahead and left. But they had, like, a three-day cruise. We had a five-day cruise. Like, mm. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> went through the safety drill, got off the boat. Uh. <laughs> so uh, we all went and stayed at a hotel, um, the Double Tree in Orlando, and then we just stayed at my friend's Airbnbs. That just, sounds pretty just cool. Hung out in Florida. You go to the beach? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. I went to look at the real estate. I went to Daytona, <laughs> Daytona Beach and looked at a couple properties. It's not uh, that bad down there, by the way. Like really? little, like little bungalows. Uh, looked at one of them. I think it's around sixty thousand. Wait, for a two-bedroom, one bath. Two-bed? Wow. Yeah, dude, it was like two blocks off the ocean. How was the condition? I mean, it, was, it needed probably 15 to 20. It, it's not bad no, it's at not all. Bad at all. No. What are the cons? Uh, I don't know. No. I, 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 I don't know. But okay. people want to do seller finance on it. Wow. So that's actually pretty that's pretty popular in Orlando and like in the Florida market in general. Mm. Sounds like I need to go out east. <laughs> dude, it's, I mean, Florida's pretty awesome. Yeah, I've never been, actually. I've always been out west, never east. Oh, man, it's beautiful. Wow. Destin, Destin, Florida is a very popular spot for a lot of people in Oklahoma. Mm. Um, I just have good friends in Orlando. So, here, so here's something really interesting about people from Florida. <laughs> I was like, where's that? <laughs> <laughs> so they refer to where they're going by county. Mm. So we say, hey, we're going to Guthrie. Or yeah, we're by going city. To Shawnee, or we're mm-hmm. going to Norman, or we're going to El Reno. Mm-hmm. They would say, I'm going to Canadian County, or I'm going to Logan County, or I'm going to Pottawatomie County, or yeah. I'm going to whatever. But, you know, Oklahoma, like Oklahoma County, I think, is, Oklahoma City is one of the largest cities in the entire country, land wise. Mm. But Orlando and Florida, they have so many small counties that that's what they refer to as going to different counties <laughs> instead of towns. Yeah. So it's the weirdest thing in the world. So yeah. there you go. Like that would you throw want to you go off. and feel like a local. 
Hey, what county are we going to? <laughs> hey, what county? Yeah. That's it. I'm going to take that too. I ain't know the secret. Hey, yeah. yeah. That'll really help out. Yeah. I'll see you local. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's what we were doing down there. Um, that, that's actually a good tip for cold calling too. You know, in the area. Instead of saying the city, say the county. There you go. Like, I've seen in this county. Well, just, always... take, just have financing set up and then just go talk to other local wholesalers. Mm-hmm. Other wow. investors. It's, it's pretty easy. We came across so many things. It's so easy to find property. Mm-hmm. And then you got, what is that one thing? Uh, deal machine. They have, that's pretty, that's used a whole lot down there still. Mm. It's a really great app. Get, deal machine? Deal, deal machine. Deal. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, deal machine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I heard that one's pretty good. I actually heard another one too as well. Um, what was it called? I downloaded it the other day. Profit Drive. Profit Drive, okay. Yeah, I heard Profit Drive's pretty well. I think it was like $100 a month and you can send direct mail and all that too as well. Right on. Um, I'm not getting paid by them, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just glad that we had this conversation so now we know and you guys know that there's other deal things out there. Yeah. I was really glad because that was something that I never did driving for dollars. Mm-hmm. I don't cold call. I don't like, I don't do any of that stuff, yeah. but I knew eventually somebody was going to figure out a way to make money off of people driving for dollars. Mm-hmm. And it happened. And it happened. Boom. And it's continually happened. I wouldn't have thought about doing it that way, mm-hmm. but that's the reason why I don't have any stock in deal machine. Mm-hmm. But I thought it was pretty genius. You know, really if you got, I mean, it's been a problem. It's a problem for everybody all over the country. Mm-hmm. They seen there was a need and they met it. And they met it. Absolutely. Yeah. It's really good. I like it. So totally off topic. But I heard you grew up in the South Side. I did. I little, grew up in Little Mexico as part, part of my growing up. Yeah. Where, where, where exactly? 24th and Western. Yeah. Wow. 24th and Villa. Yeah. GBCs. Yeah, Southside South Side Locos. Locos and all them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was friends with them. They left us alone. Yeah, I mean, they're just human beings. Yeah. Just lost. Well, actually, there was a trick behind it. Oh, okay. What was it? Networking? Well, I mean, just being me in general. <laughs> but the, no, we had a... My dad was always like trying to be an entrepreneur and stuff like that. Like They mm-hmm. were always self-employed. My parents didn't have regular jobs, really. Um, so we had like a snow cone stand. Yeah. So during the summertime, in the springtime, we'd have snow cones. They're like they're like fifty cents a piece. Like yeah, and they'll go up there and get cheap. snow cones. So everybody come to the neighbor, you know, everybody in the neighborhood would come to our house because we had like a little trailer and we make snow cones. Yeah. So they like leave the white people alone. They're <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah, they give us snow cones. <laughs> yeah, you don't don't mess with them. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I remember specifically when we lived off of Villa and Twenty Fourth Street. Mm-hmm. Um, the house, the GBC house, was on villa and they had a child that had cerebral palsy what is that so it's uh it's it's a disease that you're basically wheelchair bound Mm. um and you can tell they're just not okay but we're just we're homeschool kids (laughs) so we could live anywhere so luckily whenever i did live on south side didn't have to go to capitol hill or u.s grand or any of that okay so we're homeschooled yeah but we were always friendly nice and kind to to Mm -hmm. them because they would walk her around the block or whatever so being kind like you're saying you know about that story about a smile yeah you know it doesn't matter man Every, i don't know anybody that would just like would you quit smiling at me please <laughs> no i don't want your encouragement yeah no i don't want you to wave i mean if you're in new york or california or something like that, <laughs> in oklahoma yeah we're nice yeah even the gangbangers mm-hmm. so it's like it's community it's more it is um Family bound. Yeah. That makes sense. So, though. but what, what was your question as to why? I, I mean, you just want to know, did I grow up on South Side? Oh, oh yeah. I grew up in the South Side. You too? Okay. Yeah. So I, I can see literally the block that you're talking about in my head. Yeah. <laughs> um, I used to always drive around and, and I love the place. It's actually a, the place that I really want to make an impact in mm-hmm. uh, real estate wise. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to purchase more properties in that area and improve the community Mm -hmm. you know and that's really my goal in real estate is to improve the community that i came from absolutely and given a chance given chance to the the youth that was my age living up growing up try to lead them more in a better route 
Mm -hmm. um, to teach them financial literacy. A lot of them are not being taught that, especially in the Hispanic community. This is going to be a, probably a stupid question, but do you speak Spanish? Yes, I speak okay. Spanish. All right. Not um, super perfect. I, I speak street Spanish, okay. not like, uh, proper like Spanish. Kind of proper Spanglish? Yeah, proper Spanglish. <laughs> <laughs> it's, better, it's better than mine. I speak like... I speak is weird because I grew up on Southside, uh -huh. but I can speak actually more Swahili than I can Spanish. Wow, which is weird. Well, you you went out there at a at an older age, so. Well, I know, but it was just whatever the base. I believe the base of the language of Swahili is Arabic. Oh. Versus Latin. Yeah. Because I cannot get it, but yeah. I can understand a lot of Spanish. Yeah. I can speak very little, but mm -hmm. I speak and understand more Swahili. That's when I was in Africa, <laughs> it's weird. It's one of the weirdest things ever. So, you, so you had a lot of Hispanic friends whenever you were growing oh, up yeah. in that block. Oh yeah. <laughs> so but tell me the, curse words, the funnest activities you guys had whenever you were there, just playing with everyone and just having a good time. Are tell you... me an experience that was pretty <laughs> dope. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> My, my mom doesn't know. My dad's passed away, so you know, he wouldn't care. But he probably would have cared even whenever he was alive. Um, on 24th and I think it's Klein. So okay. the first block off of Western. Because mm, yeah, it's a yeah. really long block right down there. At the end of that street is a um, is an open drainage ditch. Like massive, like 10-foot manhole where all the water hits from the streets and it just whoosh, rushes oh, out yeah. to the Canadian River. Oh, okay. Now the Oklahoma River, right? Yeah. So, anyways, these whenever it rained, like these massive floods would come down there. I mean, it's open. It's like a freaking like people pay to go to the like the white water thing. Yeah. Like this That's is white water. This that was white water. <laughs> so we used to go down there, and uh, whenever it rained, and it it lasts for hours and hours after it was done raining. Yeah. So we would take like a raft or boards or yeah. whatever would float and we'd get in there and we'd ride it down wow that sounds like fun. pretty stupid <laughs> yeah um yeah. but we but it survived yeah um I, mean, I used to ride i used to ride my bike all over the place me and my little brother used to play roller hockey all mm -hmm. the time out there um man just i mean just enjoying life man being outside yeah. playing you know i mean growing up in little mexico <laughs> I mean, because that's what Southside. I mean, that that part of our Southside, yeah. right? Growing up, the, the Hispanic community has grown so much in that area. Yeah, so much. And you know, I we just we actually just flipped a sixplex down there. Yeah, and never had any problems. Like met the neighbors, met mm -hmm. the people across the street. Like just cool, down to earth. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful people. Didn't have a single problem mm -hmm. the entire time we were flipping it. That's good. And it was only like six blocks away from where I grew up. Yeah, but. Well, one of the places I moved, I moved a lot. Like I moved almost forty times in my life. Was it because uh, your parents were involved in politics? I believe they were. Yeah, mm. like going around telling people to vote and this and that. Yeah. Get, so, if, are you registered to vote? There did initiative yeah. petitions and like. I asked my mom one day. I was like, well, "Were we? Because being in real estate, I'm like, mm, were we evicted a lot? Like, did that <laughs> happen? Cause we moved pretty often. Like, yeah. My dad just was a gypsy." Yeah. My dad just liked to move. Yeah, so, moving all over the place. All, all over the place. I mean, I lived in the country, lived in McAllister, lived in a couple of different states, all yeah. over Southside, all over. I mean, I lived in Spencer, middle of the city. Wow. And I lived everywhere. So, um, are you still moving? No. I've, I've owned a house. My wife and I bought a house 12 years ago. Yeah, 12 years ago. Hmm. So, we've had that. Wow. It's weird. Finally, you know, being staying. Yeah, it's weird. My kids get to see that stability. Yeah. You know, especially growing up and, you know, being a father to your children and raising them up in one place shows us that you're showing the stability as well. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's, you know, every kid handles it different. I have two brothers and a sister. And me and my younger brother handled moving a ton, no problem. My mm -hmm. older brother and my younger sister did not do well with it. But we were also homeschooled, so we like went and did homeschool PE and all that stuff. So yeah, how does that work out? 
So it's I think they got sports. So I'm not socially stupid being a homeschooler, by the way. <laughs> I'm very people like me. <laughs> um, because you have really weird and awkward people in public school and mm-hmm. private school. Yeah. It's just a thing. Usually homeschoolers are the ones that are the kids that were picked on and bullied. So therefore their parents had an ability to make sure to take care of them to where they weren't being bullied. Mm. So that's like that's a huge thing. That's the reason why my wife and her family homeschooled. Yeah. Was because of the bullying that their kids were getting that they were getting. Wow. So being homeschooled, I have friends that I've had for twenty five years. Or longer. Which being homeschooled. Being homeschooled. Where, where did you meet them at? I met them at PE. PE. Or there was a... Because we had to go to a gym uh-huh. um, to do that. Or we had uh, just homeschool groups. I, I graduated a class of 88 people that were other homeschoolers. Wow. So, like, it's a... And this is back... I graduated at 01. Hmm. And... But now it's, it's so easy to homeschool because there's co-ops. And if you don't understand English or if you don't understand math or science or what like there is a group where you can go and get that teaching done yeah and homeschoolers are smarter for the most part than in general actually they are a homeschooler 90 plus percent of the time is better educated and smarter than any average public school kid you know and i believe that i really do and it's because of the parent involvement it's not having to do with the education system Mm. because of the parent involvement so the people that excel in public school and private school is because of parent involvement. It has nothing to do with the education. Wow. Wow, that tells you something. A lot. I got a lot of random knowledge. <laughs> and stati- I had to listen and read and watch all the time. It, it's some beneficial knowledge to have, though. Uh-huh. It's really good. Yeah. So what do, what do you think about, I mean, my sister, my little brother, they're kind of doing the homeschool thing, but not really. Or how does that work? They're like with doing the pan- it virtually. With the pandemic stuff and shutting schools down. Yeah, we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So like now they're doing classes online, mm-hmm. and it's it's funny seeing my little brother because he's only like seven, <laughs> and he's on the laptop just getting super distracted and trying to listen. But at the same time, he's not listening. Mm-hmm. So how do you how do you think that's gonna affect the generation? Um that has to deal with that i think it's going to make them better because the fact that the parents are there and they're involved wow yeah parent involvement <laughs> parent involvement that's really good you know it's funny because everybody's like oh my gosh what are y'all doing with your kids in school and all that stuff like Pfft. same thing we have done yeah like we're just going back to home i mean we're homeschoolers so yeah like so we didn't miss a beat yeah. So now it's cool to be a homeschooler because now we're not the one going insane. <laughs> Everybody else like, is still going insane because now they got to teach their kids. They're like, dang. They I'm sorry, to... people. Y'all have to deal with that. Like, it's y'all. It's not your calling. So I'm sorry. You got to deal with that. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, dang. They had it right the whole time. <laughs> Pretty smart. Oh man. But it's also a blessing. It's not, it, and it's something that not everybody can do. And uh, there's a lot of people that are homeschoolers that should not. Uh, there's a lot of people that, sh- that are homeschooling that probably should not. Mm-hmm. So, but man, we need to kind of close this down a little bit. Yeah, I mean, we've been talking for like over an hour, or just at an hour now. All right. So it doesn't even seem like it. I know. I mean, and <laughs> you know what's so funny is that man, this so this video cast or podcast, you know, you know whatever we want to call this, it's just about this. Mm-hmm. You know, I do this video with people that I love and I know that have a heart and a passion for life. And I just want to hear the story, like in whatever it is, random conversation like you and I've had, I mean, we've touched on so many different subjects. Yeah. All over the place. All over the place. (laughs) I love it. And, uh, and you know, my friend's going to edit this, but you know, it's, it's going to be broken down to where, man, we're talking about a bunch of different stuff. Yeah. It's about life. Yeah. You know, and people don't, one thing I love about having conversations like this, is that people don't have genuine conversation. Yeah. People are missing connection. Mm -hmm. I got off of Facebook because I was sick and tired of seeing people's highlight reels. Yeah. Having jealousy. I mean, just real talk. Not seeing, well, man, my life doesn't look like that. And pastors talk about it all the time. Yeah. You know, I'm glad that people want to show those highlights like it's highlights to them that's their heart they want to see that yeah but life is more than likes yeah 
these videos, I don't even see how many people can see them on purpose. Yeah. Because it's about having conversation. That's good. It's about having love to hear your story. And you know what? If a thousand people watch it or if one person watches it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And more for us, you know, here yeah. in like 15, 20 years, like we can look back and see the video. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and, and my children, you know, whenever I pass away, this will be forever there for my children to see and yeah. my grandchildren to see. And and the relationships and people that I, I have in my life to, to share life with. Yeah. And the genuine conversations that you're having that actually are able to dive deeper into your personality and to see who their father was. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, and you being my guest too, you know, you're going to have this forever be enshrined for people to get to know you and get to see who you are now. And then, you know, who you're going to be. Man, to be how old you are and to be, and to have the wisdom that God has given you is fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. And there's something that I want to share with you. There's a, I have a card and I'll give it to you. Okay. I also have a book that I want to give you. Okay. It's called Move. It's a fantastic men's devotional. Mm. But this card talks about it, it's not a card that talks. It's a card that shows that there's a daily priority. Yeah. That daily priority is number one God. Your family. I have that written down. Your work. Your ministry. Yourself. Yeah. You actually um We talked about it quite, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. We went it was at MP. Okay. Um and I was telling you I forgot what the story was. But it was leading towards God. And you're like, look, you're really wanting to strive to be a man of God. Here's your priorities. You got a piece of paper? And yeah. I was like, <laughs> I, uh, no, I, got I, my, I got my pamphlet. Here you go. And you actually wrote it down. So it's in your handwriting. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. <laughs> man, I'm honored, dude. <laughs> That's pretty I'm going to cool. keep it. I'm going to be like, yeah, Roger. Roger. Awesome. It came from Roger. Christ used Roger to give me those priorities. And I'm not going to lie. I haven't incorporated them the best that I should, and I struggle with it still. Oh, don't, don't, okay. Don't think that I do. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> it's a daily. It's a daily. It's a daily struggle to be on purpose. Oh, good. Because yes. I, it's it is. Oh, say that again. What was that? It's a daily struggle to be on purpose. Oh, I'm gonna quote you on that. Please that was do. a good one. <laughs> I think that's the first time I said it. See, you say profound things and you don't know that you say it. Yeah. Um. Dang, my mind just went blank. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. Um, but, oh, I find myself um, not giving myself mercy. I find myself being very hard upon myself. Um, Would you cut that out? I, I'm really? trying. I'm trying. I mean, I know we're our own worst critics. Yeah. <laughs> cut that out. Thank you. Um, but that's one of them. I was like, dang, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that on my priority list. And I'm like, dang, like, I'm better than this. And I'm not viewing that like, hey, I'm trying though. You know, I'm trying. Other people are not at all. And sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, but, you know, pray for me on that. Please, I got you. Um, I, I'm very hard on myself. I'll send you. I'll. Uh, I do a daily. So something I do on on the daily is I have Google Keep. I don't know if you have Google Keep or not. Mm, I'm not thinking. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Every single day I have a list of priorities, and most of the time I get I, I put the top date on it, and then I put all right. I got my devotional, got my prayer time got you know some work stuff sometimes it's 30 things sometimes it's five things yeah sometimes it's seven things but something that's daily every single day on it because i look at it multiple times a day and i also cheat a little bit mm -hmm. i do something and i'm like oh that should be on my list boop, 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 boop. <laughs> done yeah it's nice to have little victories yeah so if Definitely. you have goals and like you need some victory to get, keep moving forward mm -hmm. boom click that box after you've done it you said it was Google... Google Keep. Google Keep. Yeah. Okay. It's fantastic. So, and you can, uh, you know, you copy it, copy it from one day to the next. And that's what you do. You know, I've got Bible and then, uh, so I listen to the Bible app, usually on my way to the gym. Mm -hmm. I can usually knock out probably two or three chapters. Yeah. On the way. And I'm focused. What translation? 
Uh, I like NIV. NIV? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Um, so I do that, and then gym, and then I have a devotional. I send out an encouragement uh, from that devotional that I do. Mm -hmm. And then I have my work stuff. I also have my family stuff in there, too. Hey, be home by whatever time. Yeah. Like, I'm going to be home in about 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the gym. So you're working out more? I do. I mean, I've been working out for three, four months right now. Wow. So I, uh, do you know Jake Deneen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so. Good guy. Yeah, Hello. he is. So I helped him sell his first wholesale deal. Yeah. I said, all right, in turn, because he's a private, he's a private trainer, physical trainer. Anyways, that's what he did whenever I met him. So I said, I'm going to help you get your first deal. Yeah. You're going to Uh-huh. So he got me, he got me started. So we we met for probably I don't know three weeks, four weeks, mm -hmm. and then after that, I was like, all right, I know what I'm doing. Like I just needed somebody to kind of get me going. Yeah. And now I meet. So I work out five days a week in the morning, mm -hmm. and then I work in the afternoon twice a week with my brother. Mm -hmm. Um. So my older brother just had uh, almost had a heart attack. Oh. Ended up having quadruple bypass surgery. Last Is that bad? Huh. Is that bad? That's really bad. That's really bad. Like your like your heart. So imagine if you're you know you're able to see your blood vessels going to your hearts like that. Yeah. They got that sh chunk. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. So they had to put it in separate arteries from different parts of his body to go to his heart. Wow. So big dude, big big deal. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. He's all right now. He's okay. Yeah. He should be going home tomorrow or the next day. Okay. Um, yeah. But, you know, and, and I, do I have a rebel heart? And I, and I admit this, and I don't care what people think about it. Uh -huh. While I was off of Facebook, we did Monday, and we still do, on Monday nights, we do game night at my house. Mm -hmm. My brother, our neighbor, we got a couple other people coming out too. So I called my brother up and said, hey, what's going on? And are you coming tonight? He's like, no, I'm having a hard time breathing. Like, I'm getting winded walking from here to here. Yeah. I'll be there in an hour. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take you to the doctor. I don't have money. I don't care. <laughs> I'll take care of it. Yeah. Let's go. Love that. Because um, my, my really dear friend, Nick, his brother-in-law, 30, 32 years old, had a heart attack and died. Wow. Diabetes, overweight. Yeah. Like, terrible, terrible deal. So, well, he says his fingers are being numb. Like, nope. Come to get you. Be there in an hour. Yeah. Took him to the emergency clinic. And I said, look, tell them that you've not had a fever. Tell them you've not coughed. Tell them, like, like, whatever this COVID stuff is, <laughs> like, yeah. you're going to lie because we're going to get you in there to see them. Yeah. Period. Mm -hmm. I have no guilty conscience about it. Yeah. Because it got him in there and it saved his life. Mm. Imagine if you had to go through the whole Wait for COVID, COVID thing. Test. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So He would have been there forever. His oxygen level was 10% below critical. Wow. So normal is 99, 98% oxygen. He was at 84. Dangerous is at 94. Yeah. <laughs> Substantially bad. Yeah. Couldn't hear his lungs because he's got water on his lungs. All bad. The PA said, you cannot leave here unless you tell me that you're heading to the hospital across the street or I'm calling an ambulance to take you. Wow. That bad. That's bad. Yeah. So... All that to be said, the night before he went in for his surgery, and I used to not be this person, mm -hmm. I went into my mom's house, I wasn't supposed to go there because he was having his surgery the next morning, but I went there, took care of something for my aunt and my mom, and I went into that room and I got on my knees and I prayed with him. Wow. Love that. I have never done that before. Yeah. But it was hard to not cry while it's playing. Mm. Wow. I'm still getting emotional right now thinking about it. Holy Spirit. I feel it. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I don't, I mean, I, I don't even know where I was going with that, with that whole thing, but whenever I went to Kenya, I had to go all that way to hear a bishop say, I don't need, and you don't need, two ways, five pillars, seven ways to this, whatever. I got one. Mm. And do the right thing. Yeah. 
so good. One. One. Hmm. Because we know if it's right or wrong. One thing. It's so good. Yeah. I love that, bro. I yeah. really do. Man, I appreciate you being here. And and that prayer worked. It was part of it. I also had, I, I, and people are still praying over him. Cause oh, not, yeah. Not yet. We still. But let we me tell you, there's nobody to pray better for somebody than Pentecostal Africans. <laughs> oh, that. <Woo! laughs> oh, my God. Oh, it's probably very hyped in that it room. Hyped. <laughs> whenever they were praying over me, whenever I was there speaking, and they, you know, they prayed over me, it's like, oh, my gosh. Like, I've never. Woo! <laughs> well, like, hey, whoa. Holy Spirit is strong in it this room. Moving. <laughs> whenever I was speaking at the conference, I said, I do not want to go after Pastor Sam because like anything that I do after him is just going to be meh. So, and that's when I went to go speak at his event, him and his wife's event whenever I was in Kenya. And they, uh, yeah, he, they prayed over me. It's like, that brother is sweating. Fire. Praying so hard. Fire. <laughs> You're going to have to take me someday. I want to go. Dude, I'll take you. I'll take Let's you. go to Kenya. Yeah. Let's go. All right, brother. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Thank you. And remember, call people on their birthday if you have their phone number and they're on Facebook. Yeah, that's really good. It'll change their world. Yeah. We're that's right how, here. That's right. I mean, that's <laughs> why we're here. <laughs>